love this guitar. It's called an F1 because it's like a Formula One, really fast and easy to drive. And this particular version is, is part of the, the uh, Ball Family Reserve series. So I guess technically it's a John Petrucci F1 BFR. And um, of course, um, all my guitars since the beginning have always had DiMarzio pickups. I'm a big fan of humbuckers, no middle pickup no mounting rings, um, all because of technical reasons. The great thing about DiMarzio, and it's the same with Music Man, all you guys are so into promoting the art and experimenting and stuff, so you don't know how many times we've swapped out pickups and had discussions and changed things. You know, I always call it uh, trying things in, in the heat of battle. The only way to truly tell is when you have the guitar and you, you're playing live, you can kind of hear the uh, interaction of all the elements or when you're in the studio and things are mic'd up and you can get more details. With this guitar on the previous album, this was only a prototype and you know since then the guitar came into production and I toured with it for a year. So I'm really comfortable and familiar with the sound of it now. So if we make a pickup change or experiment with any other element, uh, even a cable, I know where it's uh, it's coming from and how it, it changes. My favorite guitar player of all time is Steve Morse. From learning early on, like the dregs type of stuff, I sort of realized uh, at, at an early stage that sort of practicing with a metronome using that alternate picking technique is really the only way to get that powerful control. However, having said that, there are a lot of great guitar players that have such beautiful technique that doesn't involve that, you know, that's more legato. Uh, or that uh, uses you know, economy or sweet picking. and So I try to use all of it, but I think my strength is more in the alternate picking style. You know, I like to have sort of a, um, a fulcrum point here, and uh, that's why I like not having the mounting ring and the, the pickup is really sort of my gauge as to where my, my hand is. I saw a Steve Morse clinic when I was going to Berkeley, and I remember him doing something where he was... He was doing like that, using the alternate picking just one note on a string and I swear I still remember what he played and then also you know listening to and watching Paul Gilbert and Steve Vai and guys that incorporate both styles combining um, hammer-ons and legato playing with alternate picking as well it's a combination of, of techniques and basically all you have to do is take a, a lick that maybe you were practicing alternate picking and then just apply where you can some sort of hammer on or, or pull off to, to make it work. So, you know, you might be doing something like this, for example. So, that's the difference there. So, the first way is all alternate. Second way, you add in a little pull off. And if you kind of mute the uh, strings a little bit, um, it's, it's very a la Paul Gilbert. You hear this sort of whipping. What's really inspiring, actually, is playing with, with the guys. Mike, John, Jordan, they're such incredible players. There's this wealth of ideas you know, that, that never dries up. So as soon as somebody starts playing something, it's kind of like a, uh, a snowball effect. You know, Once a song gets going, it, it, it really develops in, in such a way, like, almost on its own. You know, one of the things that I do um, live that's different from the studio, the studio guitars are recorded individually. Maybe I'll double tracks or, or you know, use a different guitar or an acoustic for a section. But live I have to kind of do that all at the same time. So I do a couple of tricks to make that happen. Um, one of the things is I have a, a couple of front end effects, phasers and flangers and things like that, that I can call up on this pedal board. For example, I was just sort of playing one of those sounds. This, this is a, a clean sound with a phaser on it. <laughs> You know, if I wanted to 
change that to uh, a flanger. It's just like. But that's the type of sound that in the studio I would probably layer, and, but I, can't, I don't have the ability to do that live. Um, so this is emulating that. And it, you know, it's done with uh, stereo delays. You, know. you can kind of hear that stereo effect. I have different delays I can bring up, things that are more dreamy. And then I call up different channels on the amplifier, and those channels simulate a doubling effect by doing a, a seven millisecond split. That's a little trick. You know, so when you have like a crunch sound. You have that, and then you can even take it a step further and make a chorusy delay sound, which creates another texture. All those tricks with uh, different delay times and chorusing uh, make the guitar live sound like as close as I can to the studio version.